Hello everyone, it's Razavan Werder from the University of Mother God Church. My name is spelled R-A-S-A-V-O-N-W-E-R-D-E-R. -E -E and I'm also known as Kelly Everts, the lady who strips for God and dances to save men's souls. You can find me on kellyeverts.com and istripforgod.com. And my religious work is under Woman Thou Art God, the University of Mother God Church, and also embodimentofgod.com, and under my books, Kelly Everts and Rosa Von Werder, books from Lulu, Amazon.com, Blurb, iUniverse, Right now, I am reviewing one of my books for you, I Strip for God, Kelly Everts, I Strip for God, available on all internet venues, and the, it's, it's not all of it, my life, my stripping for God, it's just a little bit, tiny bit of it, I'm doing much more, much, 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 much more, this is just the beginning. They're going to do a movie and maybe a TV show of my life, a series. If they do just a movie, it'll be a series of movie, movies like Rocky. But I prefer that it would be like Peyton Place, do a movie and then a TV series, I hope. There's enough material, interesting material, and I'm hoping to give some ideas and glimpses into this on YouTube. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so we're on I Sure Forgot Chapter 6, Jealousy Reigns Supreme. I'm at the Playboy Club in Chicago in 1978, and the name of this Chapter 6 is Jealousy Reign Supreme. Supreme. <laughs> it started with the singer MC of the show, a fairly nice looking girl, albeit totally flat chested who developed animosity toward me. This is how the jealousy starts. I could not fathom what I had done wrong in her eyes. I had done nothing wrong. This is what I had done wrong. You understand? Look, this is what I had done wrong. She was flat like this. The lead singer. And, and, and I have this. I'm, But I'm the lead stripper. She's the singer. You gotta have good vocal cords, not good tits. I have good tits. She's got vocal cords. Fuck you, bitch. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not jealous of your motherfucking vocal cords. Why are you jealous of my tits? You stupid bitch. You get me? Do you get me? What I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> it only takes one to start something. I learned that much from living with my mother and it became mother and company. This girl who I shall call Joey Gordon, that's not a real name, Joey Gordon, started her own company of hate against me and so I call it Joey and Company. And honestly, it took about two weeks to hit me that she despised me and despised me and was trying to do me in. She had a resentment toward my nudity, would you believe? Most of the other people in the show were topless and dancing their hearts out, but their nudity didn't bother her, only mine. That must have been because I had breasts, big ones. And I also did a sexy, though not vulgar, act. Actually, it's all in the mind. All I did was bumps, grinds, shakes, etc. To some people that might seem disgusting, to some people funny, to some vulgar, to some exciting. Most people found my act exciting, judging from the audience reaction. Oh, I was a big hit. Oh Another thing that bothered her, besides my body and breasts, was that I was the star of the show. Oh, they didn't announce me as a star, nor did they put my name in the paper. That was the show manager, Jerry Lucas's fault. But everyone knows that the star of Minsky's burlesque is the stripper and the comedian the second, or in some cases, has stopped dealing with her. But there were two people who wanted to believe they were the stars. 
Joey Gordon, that's the girl, the singer that I said, the vocal chorus. And the lead male dancer. Oh, Jesus Christ. A gay guy who had his boyfriend with him. They resented the fact that I, a mere strip dancer, was taking the limelight and attention away from them when they, who had all the talent in their brain, were being overlooked. As soon as I got into town, I started my own personal publicity campaign. I first made inquiries about what they had done or intended to do, and it was zero! Zero! What they done or intended to do, the, the show. It was zero! They did nothing. They intended to do nothing. <laughs> I didn't even remember this. I'm glad I wrote it down. Thank God for diaries! That was another thing they would go to resent with a fury. My publicity campaign. They would be weeping and gnashing their teeth, teeth, trying to figure out how I got all that publicity, and they would say that I was only promoting myself and not the show. <laughs> the truth was that it was the duty of the show managers themselves to, to, to promote the show and all of us in it, but they didn't know anything about PR. When I did my PR, it was for myself and my apostolic work, but everyone knew where I was working and people would flock to the Playboy Club to see me in the show. It was because of my publicity, a job they were negligent in doing. Chapter 7, The Publicity Blitz. <laughs> my publicity campaign started like this. The first day I got into town, I think it was Thursday, I immediately bought all the papers in Chicago. I, I do this in every town. It must have been the following day, Friday, that I called the newspapers. The show was to open on Monday. Two of the papers I called were interested, but both wanted exclusive stories. <laughs> and because one of them got it first, the other wouldn't bite. I don't recall the details, but I won one and lost one. The one I won was the Chicago Sun-Times. Bob Green, a syndicated columnist, reaching 65 newspapers, came to interview me. I had no important, uh, no idea how important he was. He wrote a very funny, amusing article which hit the paper on the very day we opened. Everyone thought it was a fluke, the fact that I got such a good article. They figured. <laughs> Everyone, when I say everyone, I mean everyone in the show, the Minsky's Burlesque show. They thought, oh, well, Kelly Everett's got lucky. Now people will wise up, and after they see the show, they'll see she's nothing, and we are the great ones. <laughs> that was the feeling I got. Little did they know the worst for them was yet to come. This was only the appetizer. <laughs> On the very first day of work, even before Joey Gordon started her campaign against me, would you believe we had to share a dressing room? I had several thousand dollars worth of dresses and jewelry in the room, and she wanted to keep it unlocked so she would zip in and out, but I have had to have it locked for fear of having something stolen, most of which was brand new. I had especially made to work at the Playboy Club. I had to fight on that one, and finally Jimmy Matthews said my request was reasonable. Everyone knows... The stripteaser has to have her clothes locked up because they are very valuable and she can't work without them. Joey must have started grumbling against me because next thing I know, the choreographer from Vegas, a lady, walked up to me in the dressing room and told me off. <laughs> I didn't understand what in God's name she was talking about. It was really strong. Something about, <coughs> I thought I was the star. This was going to be a recurring, recurring theme. <coughs> I thought I was the star, <coughs> and then I had better straighten out. I was just flabbergasted and confused and acted meek and quiet. I said something to the effect that I didn't know I had done anything wrong and would try to cooperate in the future. <laughs> At this point, I was afraid of getting fired. They would try that later on too, but that they couldn't find a replacement. <laughs> hey, you cannot meet great stripping stars everywhere around the corner. The girl next door ain't no goddamn stripping 
that star, baby. I intended to keep this job for which I had high hopes at all costs. It was like I had my mind riveted on doing something great while working there, and no one and nothing would stop me, not even all of hell. Okay, where are we? <laughs> Let's continue next to be 